Hi, um, today I'm going to be showing a mechanics and materials problem involving two columns. One's a steel column, one's an aluminum column. They both have the same height, however we do not know the cross-sectional area of the aluminum. We do, however, know the cross-sectional area of the steel. It's in half an inch by half an inch. Um, also in the problem, it, um, the modulus of elasticity is given for the steel and the aluminum, and the specific gravity is given for the steel and the aluminum. What they want us to solve first is the D of the cross-sectional area of the aluminum. And they want the D to be that so the aluminum and steel struts have the same weight. So I, I go ahead and say that the weight of the aluminum equals the weight of the steel because that's what they're asking. They're saying that it has to be that way. And they want us to solve for the D, so that's what I do. Well, the weight of the aluminum will be the specific gravity of the aluminum times the volume. You should know that. The So therefore, also, the specific gravity of the steel is multiplied by the volume of the steel. And volume is the length times the area. So that's what I do right there. So then whenever I plug everything in, for the aluminum side, I'm going to get 170 pounds per foot cubed, multiplied by the length of 4 feet, multiplied by the area the cross-sectional area of the aluminum, which is D times D. And then we're going to equal, we're going to plug in for the specific gravity of the steel, which is 490 pounds per foot cubed, multiplied by the length of the steel column, which is 4 feet, and multiplied by the area of the column. Now the cross-sectional area was half an inch times half an inch, so we're going to go ahead and convert that to feet, because everything else is in feet. We want to have... Uh, consistent units in our in our equations. So we got 1 24th foot and another 1 24th foot. So then what I do is this side has 4 feet so we're going to divide both sides by 4 feet because this side has 4 feet as well. So both 4 feet on each side of the equation cancel out. We're also going to move this 170 uh, pounds per foot cubed over the other side and that's here it is right here. We multiply the 1 24th times 1 24th and we get 1 divided by 576 foot squared. Notice that in the numerator we have a foot squared and a foot cubed. Well that's going to give us foot to the fifth and we have a foot to the cubed in the denominator. So that's going to give us a foot squared. The pounds cancel out and here we go. Whenever I did the algebra on it I get this number and foot to the squared. However we still have d squared over on the left side of the equation so we're going to square root both sides, and then we're left with this, 0 0.070739 feet. We then convert the feet to inches, which I will explain to you why I converted it to inches in a second. Now that we know what the D is for the aluminum, we then need to compute the critical load for each strut. Now the, the uh, critical load is this formula right here. Now the critical load is this centric force and by centric I mean it's going into the center of our beam and it's being applied to the pin these are pin this is a pin pin condition for each one of these columns and since it's a pin uh, pin pin condition the K equals 1 for each of these for the K is 1 for the steel the K is 1 for the aluminum then now I'm going to go ahead and go back down to where we're solving for the P critical. Now I need to solve for the I because we don't know that. So the I for the steel is this right here. And remember we got 0 0.5 inches right there and 0 0.5 inches right here. If you don't know how to solve the area moment of inertia, watch another one of my videos where I explain how to solve the area moment of inertia of a uh, beam or a column or whatever. So we go ahead and plug that I in right here, and we have our modulus of elasticity, which was given in the problem right here that we plugged in, and we know what the K is, and we know what the length was. It was 4 feet, but we converted it to inches, because yet again, we want to do consistent units. So then we find the, the P critical of the steel column, which is 647 pounds. So if this were to exceed... 
if the if the centric force were to exceed 647 pounds, the column would buckle. So now we're going to go ahead and go to where we find the the p critical for the aluminum. We solved the um, I, the area moment of inertia for it. And remember, this was d, and this was d. Well, we solved that earlier, and we converted it to inches. So we get this inches. That's inches to the fourth, which we plug in right here. We also know the modulus of elasticity, which was given in the problem. We know what the k is. It's one, and we know what the length is. It's 48 inches squared. So what we do is we go ahead and do you know just plug all this in your calculator, plug and chug, and you're going to get 1,872 pounds. On that, uh, on this right here. That was the aluminum. So right here we got the aluminum. This right here, this P, is that 1,872. I believe that's correct. It's 1,872 pounds. So this can take 1,872 pounds. Right there. This right here. This. You can put 1,872 pounds right there before this will buckle. And if it buckles, it'll do like that. This over here could take 647 pounds before it buckled. And it would buckle like this. And that completes this lesson.